Hello students, this is Mr. Ronald. Welcome to your final. This is the nonfiction portion of the final. You'll have 45 minutes. You may listen to this uh, recording as you are taking your final. I will also record the questions in a separate video. So let's uh, get started. Uh, you had a chance to review uh, the readings for both the fiction and nonfiction on Thursday and Friday. And your final will count for 20% of your grade. You'll have uh, the nonfiction uh, portion now and Thursday and Friday, my third and second period classes will take the non the fiction uh, portion of the final which will be set up in a similar manner. There's going to be the YouTube video I shared of that and my reading the questions. So let's begin with our nonfiction. Again, remember your finals are worth 20% of your class grade. So please take uh, this test and all tests this week seriously. Let's get started. Help Him Up, A Witness's Account of Panic on a Subway Platform by Michael Wilson, 2017. More than 5 million people ride the New York City subway every day. In this article, Michael Wilson, a reporter for the New York Times, describes his personal account of a frightening incident and the New Yorkers who were willing to help. Man stood bent at the waist, but sideways, as if he were doing some kind of deep stretching. He was incoherent and filthy, his pants around his ankles, but boxer shorts intact. Asleep on his feet with his head buried in his puffy coat, he leaned with an arm outstretched against a metal pillar. The pillar deep below ground in the 2nd Avenue subway station in Manhattan was all that stood between him and the platform edge and the tracks of the Brooklyn bound F train. It was Saturday afternoon, April 29. Everyone who came down the stairs to the train platform saw him, myself included, and everyone did the same thing, watched him. He wobbled this way and that, never straying up or lowering himself to the ground, just swayed from side to side, his full weight against the pillar. Maybe some people thought about approaching him, as I did, and took another look at those fallen pants, the streaked pale legs, as I did, and decided to keep their distance. I did. A few women walked over to the emergency call box and spoke to someone through a speaker. They said a homeless man looked as if he might fall on the tracks. A few minutes passed this way. And then it happened. The man lurched and lost his hold on the pillar and plunged over the edge of the platform to the tracks below. It is a very specific New York City preoccupation and plotline, a horror and a drama that grips the imagination and lays down a gut check. What happens when someone falls on the tracks and can't save himself? What would you do if you were there? What if a train is coming? Which one is the electrified and fatal third rail? These stories typically have two endings, and I've written them both. The happy endings introduce another stranger to the ranks of that New York subset of rescuers, the subway hero. I interviewed one, an actor named Chad Lindsay in 2009 after he jumped down and pulled a drunken man out of the path of a downtown bound train in Pennsylvania Station. He in turn evoked the hallowed name of another, Wesley Autry, who a couple of years earlier had lain down on top of a man having a seizure between the rails and waited as a train passed over them. Could have done that, Mr. Lindsay said. Did what I did. I could have done that. Mr. Lindsay had no warning that day. The guy wasn't there one second and on the tracks the next. On that afternoon, 
at 2nd Avenue. We all watched a similar situation play out. Time slowed. A woman screamed. I pulled my messenger bag off my shoulder and let it drop. I was aware behind me of another woman shouting into the call box. There were a dozen or more people nearby. I distinctly remember a man yelling, For God's sake, stay away from that third rail. I ran several feet to the edge of the platform where the man had fallen. He was coming toward me, not because he had so suddenly sobered up, but because there was another man down there already pushing him toward safety. I bent down and grabbed two fistfuls of puffy coat below his shoulders. Other hands reached down on either side of me and grabbed two. We all pulled without a word and up he came. We dragged him away from the edge. I looked back for the second man, but he wasn't on the tracks. He already vaulted back up to safety. People clapped and shouted and smiled at one another. The young man who had jumped down to help wearing a green jacket walked around in circles by himself, shaking a little. Two Metropolitan Transportation Authority workers whom I had seen upstairs earlier attending to a Metro card machine appeared and spoke to the homeless man who had pulled his pants up. I'm okay, he told them. I'm just dirty. You can't stay here, they told him. You have to go back up to the street. A police officer arrived and I lost track of the man. I approached the rescuer in the green jacket and introduced myself. His name was David Capuzzo, 26. He was coming from his job weighing tables at Rosie's, a Mexican restaurant just outside the station entrance above. He was born in Bogota, Colombia and adopted by American parents. He was raised in the suburbs in New England. He is an illustrator, lives in Brunswick, Brooklyn, and waits tables to make extra money. He was heading to his girlfriend's apartment in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn, when he entered the station. I see the guy, he said later. I pictured myself helping him, but I didn't. I just kept looking back at him and looking at everybody else look at him. Eventually, he lost interest. I got caught up on my phone. Then I heard all those ladies yell. Mr. Cabuzo saw the man on the tracks. He was hunched over. He said, he's kind of like wobbling. Mr. Cabuzo said he called out, press the button, press the button, and walked in a quick circle. Then he acted. I just jumped down, he said. I grabbed like his legs together and I stood up. This is a time sensitive issue. I don't know where that train is. He shouted, help him up. He felt the man rise from his arms, lifted to the platform and then made his own escape. I jumped up like no problem, he said. I hurt my hand a little bit. It all happened so quickly, it was a blur. Mr. Caputo, Mr. Capuzzo is not even sure that he was the only person who jumped down to help. Several minutes later, the F train in typical weekend fashion finally arrived, its potential victim long gone. Mr. Capuzzo got out after a few stops. He texted his girlfriend, Guy fell, so I had to jump on the tracks. Now I have a cut on my hand. He called his mother. Both were upset with him at first. Mad I jumped on the tracks in the first place, he said, but more thankful he was okay. In, in the days since, Mr. Capuzzo has looked for the homeless man near the subway. No sightings yet. The man looked so incoherent, he might not even remember what happened. He most likely would not recognize the man who jumped down and helped him. Police and fire departments had no record of calls regarding the incident. Mr. Cabuzzo said that before he jumped, he remembered an old public service announcement. 
20 people are thinking someone else called about the gas leak, he recalled thinking. If nobody does anything, he's going to die. He did something. And someday another person will save someone on the tracks, and that tale will be told, and that rescuer might look back and remember the one from 2017 and the part about the pants around the ankles. That guy who grabbed the legs and lifted it up like that? Couldn't do it. Did what I did, but couldn't do that. 